Welcome students, welcome to this uh, presentation on an introduction to environmental economics part 2. In the first video I had identified three reasons as continuous increase in population, continuous increase in uh, income and the changes and development that has taken place in science and technology which has influenced the need for the development of a subject like environmental economics. In this video I shall explain uh, the uh, writings that have appeared to have supported the need for the development of environmental economics. Please do uh, subscribe to this channel and uh, watch this video till the end. Please make your comments and share with your friends. Thank you. It is necessary to understand the development of the sub this subfield of economics. Before 1950s, environmental problems were not given uh, any consideration because it was believed that uh, nature has the ability to take care of its problem if at all it arose. At this stage, I thought that it is important for a new learner to know the context of uh, the development of environmental economics. This a study of how the subject has grown gives us a larger perspective about the subject and we can methodically proceed to learn the subject. First, let me just look at the ideas that the classical economists have contributed. This school has not really worked on environmental issues at all, but their writings did influence environmental economics as it shaped by. Adam Smith, for example, was interested only in invisible hand working and that of the self-interest. He believed that individuals are guided by self-interest and they do what is good for themselves and therefore what is what they do good for themselves may also turn to be good for others. But when we look at it from an environmental economics perspective, we can now understand that Smith's idea of self-interest really guides many, many economic activities. For example, um, the uh, letting down of polluted uh, water into the, um, the water bodies or throwing garbage, uh, individual household garbage somewhere in a public space. Both indicate that they are guided by self-interest and not necessarily that it is doing good to the environment at all. be related to Tom uh, Malthus and Malthus is famous for his ideas on the population um, theory. So he was concerned that if the population was increasing the way it was increasing, it will definitely in course of time raise food shortage issues and therefore there was a need to control population. This idea though was not related to environmental economics, today we can understand how the a world is grappling with the population problem and this population problem is raising issues relating to the exhaustion of natural resources. The third writer in the classical school is David Ricardo and David Ricardo raises issue about the law of diminishing uh, returns in agriculture which in some way limits the uh, ability to go on producing more and more even if we need more and more because nature has a limit beyond which production cannot take place. These three writers in some broad sense have given some idea about um, uh, the environmental issues but not uh, focusing on environmental issues. So the ideas of the uh, classical school was accepted by another set of writers many years later called the neoclassical school. They accepted the main principles of the classical economist but they worked on developing tools and methodologies to uh, understand and analyze the market uh, mechanism and the market phenomena. So Alfred Marshall developed the partial equilibrium analysis, what we call today as microeconomics, and therefore the tools of analyzing the working of the market, also conceptualized the idea of external economies and diseconomies, and 
uh, uh, gave a clarity to the competitive market framework and optimum allocation of uh, resources. The other important writer in this school who makes a lot of sense to the study of environmental economics is Wilfred Pareto. So the important concept that we study here is that of Pareto optimality and understand how we can increase the welfare of people in environmental economic issues. So he developed the general equilibrium theory or what we call the macroeconomics of today and also highlighted the conditions that are necessary for obtaining efficiency in an economy. Then the important writer is Pigou who explained externality which is what we study as market failures today. So what is market failure? What are externalities? And how can these externalities be corrected with the use of taxes and subsidies? So these three ideas are very much used or these three ideas, the, the ideas of these three economists, Marshall, Pigou and uh, Pareto are very much used in the neoclassical framework to understand and analyze economic um, uh, phenomena. Now let us look into the subject theme wise and uh, look at the first one which is the natural resource economics. Industrial uh, uh, revolution had peaked, science and technology had developed and mining was happening on a large scale and coal was being used to increase production. Writers and thinkers observe the way the world works in front of them. They observe that if this is the way coal is going to be used, then it would put a lot of pressure on or limits on the growth of the economies. So slowly issues relating to conservation, exhaustion of natural resources, both biotic and abiotic resources came in their writings. The writer was Stanley Jevons in 1865 who raised this issue of excessive use of coal in England and even warned that England may not continue to be an industrial nation if it uses coal the way it was using. We also find that uh, Cecil Gray's article was on how to use economics to uh, conservation. So how the tools of economics can be used for Conservation was another set of ideas that came in. We also have the writing of uh, Gordon and Schiffer, uh, a biologist and an, an economist and a biologist who wrote about fishing in the high sea and the prices of fishing. By now, the uh, environmental issues with these writings had started making some um, uh, dent in the thinking of people around the world and after this uh, world war the US uh, government uh, put up a study called resources for freedom foundation for growth and scarcity or and this was to study the resource availability of the American economy. With this study came several writings that concentrated on conservation and exhaustion of resources. Some of these studies were on scarcity of resources, then the consumption and production of goods using natural resources, then we have resource shortages and uh, when resource shortages happen, what happens to the cost of extraction of these uh, resources and finally the conservation um, of resources. All these studies together uh, slowly gave a, a movement towards the study of resources as a special branch. Another set of studies or writings uh, uh, appeared to uh, move towards uh, ecology. And the first of the writing that uh, we could look into was that of uh, Kenneth Boulding who wrote in 1966 uh, a seminal paper called The uh, Earth as a Spaceship. In this particular uh, paper, Boulding uh, assumes the Earth to be a closed system and the only uh, resource that this closed Earth gets is from the Sun and no other resource. 
Therefore, the rest of the economic activities that have to happen within, uh, inside this closed system has to be from the resources that are available on the earth. He also raises the issue about the pollution that will be created or the, the waste that will be generated by economic activities. He highlights the fact that these uh, um, the waste that is generated cannot be thrown out of this closed system. The earth itself has to accept the garbage or this um, uh, waste generated as a sink. So that was the way we looked at earth and then of this earth, economic activity is a small part of the various activities that take place on this earth. We also have the writings of Rogel in 1971 where he connected the relationship between economic activities and the laws of um, um, natural environment and to the laws of thermodynamics. We have a physicist and an economist who write together the material balance model of how resources are, um, uh, are exchanged in carrying out various activities of the economy and uses the laws of thermodynamics once again. By this time, there was an, uh, the, the economic issues were quite highlighted and uh, it was a group of uh, thinkers, writers, uh, philosophers, lawyers, economists, scientists, um, businessmen, all together they meet in, um, in Rome and this is called the Club of Rome where they discussed me, uh, the environmental issues for the first time at the international level. Then we find that Herman Daly talks about the planetary boundaries and says that we cannot carry on economic activities in this way. There has to be a limit to these economic activities. And finally, we have uh, writings relating to natural resources, living uh, things like forestry and fisheries as well. The other set of writings relates to how institutions influ have shaped the development of environmental economics. The other set of thinking is about how institutional economics has shaped the nature of environmental economics. Ronald Coase is uh, uh, paper is considered to be a landmark paper as far as market environmentalism is concerned. So when conflicts appear on environmental issues, the answer was to move towards market environmentalism. Then we have Garrett Hardin's The Tragedy of the Commons, where a common property resource like a grazing field could be abused if everybody believes that it is a common property and everybody would put uh, their cows into that meadow. So finally, none of the cows could get enough to eat. Now, this was a major paper and set in motion a lot of uh, debates and arguments on how to protect the common property resources like lakes and rivers. However, contradicting that, uh, Eleanor Ostrom in uh, 2000, who won a Nobel Prize for that, she uh, came to the conclusion that it is not necessary that common property resources will all be abused. People can actually organize themselves well together and collectively uh, use the natural resources for their improvement. For example, uh, a lake in a village could be used well or a pond in a village could be used well if all the members of the village uh, plan to of fish only during certain time and thus increase the fish yield which would be beneficial to all. So this institutional economics has also shaped the study of environmental economics and these have been another area that has uh, gained a lot of importance in the study of the subject. It is not that only the writers and scientists and uh, um, thinkers have influenced uh, uh, economists have influenced the subject in its development. There have been uh, many social movements which has also shaped the nature of environmental economics as a subfield. For example, the American conservation movement in the 1800, they led for a long time, many, many people across the world were involved in conservation movement. And this led to the setting up of large tracts of land for the national park. Many countries of the world set up the national park during this American uh, conservation movement.
there was yet another interesting uh, writing which gave a political uh, uh, overtone to the environmental issues which was in the form of writing by Rachel Carson called The Silent Spring. With this book she raised the issue of the well-grown well-developed fertilizer industry by then and how the use of these chemical fertilizers and DDT was affecting the animal life, plant life and human life. So the political, it was politically debated and finally there were made, restrictions were made to the use of these chemicals on uh, human life and all forms of life. So this indiscriminate use of pesticide is an issue which even today uh, we consider when we talk about environmental issues and one of the uh, very uh, well-known case of uh, use of uh, pesticide or chemicals in agriculture has been the case of endosulfan in the state of Kerala where it has caused untold hardship to people and their health. So by this time, environmental economics is quite, uh, issues have been quite accepted, but then an environmental level, uh, discuss, the international level discussions had not taken up. So we find here the United Nations for the first time meets in Stockholm and they discuss uh, environmental issues and they ultimately come to this conclusion that there is only one Earth. So only one Earth became the theme of that uh, conference and they discussed issues relating to economic growth, to water, to ocean, to land, to pollution and how to improve the well-being of people. So that is how the first international effort was made to understand environmental issues. Then the second important uh, world meeting was the World Commission on Environment and Development in 1987 and with that they came a um, path-breaking uh, study on uh, the sustainable development also called the Brundtland Commission report. This set in motion the study of sustainability uh, with regard to environmental resource use and today sustainability has become a major part of environmental economics. Uh, focus. As far as India is concerned, we have one big movement that we can talk about how uh, environmental issues were brought up to their uh, to the concern of individuals. One was the Chipko movement that happened in 1973, where people in Uttarakhand um, now um, came together to protect the trees by hugging the trees. So they prevented that from happening. There was another mass people movement. Uh, for the Silent Valley in Kerala where um, they prevented the Silent Valley from being destroyed and conservation was an issue there. So these kind of, uh, all these activities and many more have shaped the nature of environmental economics and the issues that we study in environmental economics. That is why I thought that it is important that I can sequence these studies for you so that you know how this subject has evolved as a separate subject. I hope you enjoyed watching uh, this video and have made, um, have made yourself clear how the subject has grown. So please uh, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh, subscribed and uh, share it with your friends. Please post your comments as well on some topics that you may want to be uh, covered during these uh, videos that I make so that it can be more focused. So thank you, thank you very much for watching this video till the end.